NCAA tournament alive. The orange in the home, white Wake Forest in the road, black here today in front of a crowd that is very much tinted orange and blue, at least here in the early going. Just a little bit of orange and blue. Where's yours? Where's your team spirit? I have my green on for the Irish. Come on now. I root for a good game <laughs> and a close finish. <laughs> Number 11, Syracuse, that's their seed here in the tournament. Wake Forest seeded number 14. That'll be Orange's leading score, 20 points a game. And Howard second at 15 and a half. Eight to shoot on the opening possession. And it's Battle with a long two to get the scoring started. A quick little head fake by Battle. Froze the defensive player, allowing him to be able to get to his left. And folks, this is a Syracuse team that is terrific in isolation situations. One of the top teams in the country in that area. Here's Will to give with a three-point try. Tipped out by Dolija into the hands of Battle. Syracuse coming off of a win, 55-52 on Saturday against Clemson. They only played seven minutes off the bench in that game, but it was a huge victory for them to close out the season and Wake Forest finish off Saturday with a loss at Georgia Tech. Too many turnovers in that game for them. 22 turnovers and only 19 made field goals as they lost by eight against the Yellow Jackets. You cannot turn the basketball over and that's going to be a huge key tonight as well This is a Syracuse team that is can be explosive in transition. You have to eliminate their easy opportunities Flashing Terrence Thompson into that high post an area of focus Rotating him inside with the big man Doral Moore Thompson off the mark again when you catch it there, your eyes have to go to the rim, but you also have to be a little patient. He's at the foul line there, sort of taking his time. Good pass by Dolezal. Great passing started with battle into Dolezal and ends with Chuku at the rim, and he'll go to the line. Hey folks, watch this nice little pass. Dolezal, I love players that when they have a secondary defender coming over that they don't hold on to the basketball long. That ball hit his hand and was out of his hand so quickly, allowing Chuku to get fouled. Well, Jim Beheim made the point after the last game. Somebody asked him in his news conference after the game, it looked like there were times where Marek wanted to shoot the ball. Would you encourage him to shoot beyond 15 feet? And he said, not really, no. <laughs> so he's certainly become a distributor in that sense, at least in his head, to think that it's more often he should pass than shoot. Yeah, but he's had some games where he's starting to knock down that little 15-footer with some confidence. And that's the issue with Dillajan is he lacks confidence, when he, especially after he takes one and misses it. Crawford has seven on the shot clock, looking for the screen from Thompson. Wide open, Shondi Brown was halfway down. Offensive rebound in and out of the hands of Thompson. You're going to see Syracuse set a lot of high ball screens with Chukwu trying to keep Thompson. That's the range. 15 feet. Oh, no. <laughs> really, he's been really working on that job. I've watched a lot of film with Dolajai, and he not only will make that little 15-footer, but he can make that little 8-foot little push shot as well. And if he can give them some offense, Syracuse is going to be very difficult to deal with because we know what percent Howard and Battle bring to the floor for the Orange. It's the big three, those aforementioned players, and if there's any other offensive contribution, that's counted as pretty much a bonus for the Orange. Strong take by Shondi Brown, the freshman from Orlando, number 33 in the ESPN 100 in this year's freshman class. And folks, check out that body. That kid does not look like a freshman. Look like a junior out there on the floor. He's got some serious eyes. Danny Manning telling us yesterday, and presumably has been telling Brown all season long, he wants him to be more aggressive offensively because he can have big games as he did in the middle of ACC play. Howard pull up three is pure right over Wilbekin. And that's problematic when Howard is knocking down shots early because he's one of those guys when he can knock one down early he has a lot of confidence the remainder of the game. Thompson with a feed to the wing and a foul on the floor on the drive for Brown. 
folks, take a look at this one here by Howard. And you're talking about a guy that last year that struggled with some confidence. That is a challenge pull-up jump shot, and he shoots it with such confidence. It's been so much fun to watch his growth and his development over the last two years. He's had an outstanding year for the Orange. He's come on in a big way, fought through injury last year. And so he never wavered in his commitment to playing for Syracuse despite talk that he might transfer earlier in his career Said that thought never really crossed his mind and that the coaching staff were his biggest supporters Long possessions here in the early going Olivier Saar Who's got a lot of promise a very intriguing player in his first year for Wake Forest Mike and I didn't want to interrupt you when he came into the game I, I was gonna say that he's the perfect person to put at that spot more of a pick and pop four and has tremendous range Tyus battle was looking for a highlight reel dunk He'll get a chance to cap the play at the free throw line when we come back Randolph Childress, an ACC legend. Fell on the floor there, was playing defense. That was Jeff McGinnis. He was my teammate back in the early 20s with the Denver Nuggets. <laughs> and I tell you what, Jeff has matured so nicely. What a, I mean, I used to almost have to threaten this guy, man, to just stay in line and do things the right way. My wife and I ran into him on the circuit, and uh, man, he's grown up nicely. But how about a move by Randolph Childress? My gosh, was he? How about a move so by you? You are, you're like the modern big man who doesn't want to play under the basket. He wants to stretch his skills beyond the arc. But notice they didn't put the finish of my J in the frame, man. Can't shoot it. <laughs> Cited reason my shirt sleeves were in the way. <laughs> which is fair. Tight. Which is fair. Feels a little tight. 11-4 lead for Syracuse as Wake Forest is just two for five from the floor so far and they turn it over Allison what was going on in that Danny Manning huddle Allison's keeping a secret from us fun so we'll to, is that what it is we'll have to pry the vault open at think, some point think she got lost on the subway <laughs> <laughs> no, that was me oh you almost left a story to follow later yes Dolajai baseline gets trapped and turns it over and now it's Crawford leading the break in transition A couple of touch passes gets it into the corner. Here's Keyshawn Woods off the bench finds Crawford All right, Allison, are you ready to share now? I suppose okay, yeah, I'll let you guys in on a little secret from the huddles there with Danny Manning if Offensively against this zone. They've got to do a better job spreading them out and finding the gap They're moving too much east and west. They got to start getting it inside against the zone and Allison nailed it because once you get one ball reversal now in that ball reversal you have to look to attack the closeout you can't just reverse it back across the floor because when you're playing against a really good defensive team there Mike the first good opportunity you get on the offensive end is the best shot you keep moving it around it always leads to a bad shot or a turnover I'm in complete agreement with Allison and now out of the timeout they've got their second leading score Keyshawn Woods there at the bottom of your screen number one into the game a guy who they use off the bench as a spark offensively that was on Frank Howard for the orange his first Keyshawn started the first couple of games of the year and they really needed some offensive spark off the bench and he's certainly become that 10 double figure game scoring games in ACC play and they're gonna need him tonight but in the season finale Against Georgia Tech, he was scoreless yes. in 19 minutes, only the second time that's happened this year. The first understandable as it came against Virginia. Well, they've had a lot of people scoreless. How about Pitt? Only seven points in the first half. One, <laughs> one made field goal. They shot 4.5%. Unreal. Battle takes a couple of bumps. And the foul is on the floor. Tomorrow, our Wednesday NBA doubleheader starts in Detroit with the Pistons hosting the Eastern Conference leading Raptors at 8 Eastern. And then LeBron and the Cavs are in Denver to take on the Nuggets at 10.30. Coverage starts with NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. How about Blake Griffin? He's been straight falling for the Pips Pistons. 28 points per game over the last two. It is weird seeing him in the Pistons. <laughs> a bit, bit of a change. O'Shea Brissett with a nice bucket, reverse lay-in, stretches the lead to 13-4 in favor of Syracuse, and now all five starters for the Orange with at least a bucket. 
And folks, I absolutely love O'Shea Brissett. He can do so much out on the floor. Terrific off the drive, a developing three-point shooter as well. And if it weren't for Marvin Bagley the third at Duke, we'd be talking a lot more about number 11 in white. He can flat out get it done on the offensive end. All ACC rookie team selection. The freshman out of Ontario. And he's a stat sheet stuffer. Rebounds it at nine rebounds a game. Gets some steals, a couple blocks. He's going to be an absolute stud in this league. In this match here. And if there's one thing that's been lacking this year from Pascal Chuku, it's been the ability to finish at the rim. Dunks especially. Yeah, and when, and when he catches it, he's got to make up his mind right away. He hesitated there, and that's what allowed Saar to get back into the play. Battle ahead of the field. Soars and delivers the jam. And like we talked about it at the top, you cannot turn the basketball over against Syracuse, especially live ball turnovers. They have such excellent wings who can get out and finish at the rim. Case in point at the other end of the floor. Battle feeling the hot hand. Takes it with the left. Takes the bump. And he'll go to the line and a chance for three. And folks, this is a poor defensive possession here by Wake Forest. Ty's Battle pulls that basketball off the rim, took it the length of the floor, and still able to get to the rim. For Wake Forest, you have to know that Cuse wants to attack you off the bounce. So you got to flood the lane and force them to kick it out there and force them into a jump shooting team. The defense in transition, the defense in the half court has been absolutely asleep for the Demon Deacons. With the free throw, a 9-0 run for Syracuse. Danny Manning wants Ty Nine points here for a guy who averages 20 a game. Third leading scorer in the ACC this year. Behind only Boston College's Jerome Robinson and Marvin Bagley of Duke. Yeah, you, he's impossible to guard one-on-one, -on -one, which is why we were talking about before we went to the break. You have to flood the lane to make him a passer. He's an incredible scorer. Right now outscoring Wake all by himself. Plus five in that category. Kickball is the call underneath the basket from Tim Comer, one of the officials tonight, joined by Bill Covington and Ray Stein. And Mike, that's the second part of it. When Wake Forest can get Syracuse to miss a shot, they just can't walk the basketball up the floor. We talked about how they need to attack the ACC area in the half court. They've got to get ahead of this and try to get some easy points before Syracuse D gets set up. Let's go to Allison. Well, guys, what we're seeing from Tyus Battle early here is maybe his uh, Mamba mindset. Before every game, he sets aside 20 minutes to watch the Kobe Bryant compilation retirement video. And it says it just reminds him of the way he wants to play, play aggressive and attack. And I know, Alfonso, you did something similar before games as well, right? I should sit down and watch my little Charles Barkley little videos that they used to have. Uh, Charles was one of my favorite low post players. And I drew a lot of inspiration from him, especially a back to the basket guy who could step out and knock down threes. It was a way I used to channel and focus to get ready for the games. So just, do we have to assume now that Tyus also wants to uh, win an Oscar for an animated short with the way he's playing? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got his name all over it. Dolajai open, hit for 16 before, 17 no. But Chuku clears the lane and gets the lay-in. Syracuse is scoring in every single way possible right now. Wake Forest has to tighten up on the defensive end of the floor. Shondi Brown, Olivier Saar, two and two to round out the scoring thus far for the Demon Deacons. And another miss. They are 0 for 5 from 3 and 2 for 9 to get things started. It's been all Tyus Battle in Brooklyn. He's been absolutely sensational. In ESPN's BPI currently has them. Their odds of getting in at 66%. Wow. That's not in, that's not including if they win this game. I disagree with that number. I don't think it's that close to being a certain thing just yet. Really? Yeah. I actually have them with four really good wins on the season. We know Syracuse is all, wow, what a finish <laughs> inside by Darrell Moore. My goodness. And a much needed one. Absolutely. And we have not mentioned his name in this game yet. And in order for Wake Forest to win this game, 
He's got to get going on the offensive end. What a nice pass across the lane and a strong finish over Moyer. But regarding Syracuse, they've beaten Clemson, Virginia Tech, Louisville, and Miami. We know that they typically play a soft non-conference schedule, but on the power and strength of the ACC with four quadrant one wins at 8-10 and ten in this league, I think they deserve to get in because we're probably going to end up having two 8-10 and ten teams from the Big 12 in the tournament, including Oklahoma State. And if that's going to be the case, the biggest, baddest, deepest league in the country, I think teams at 8 and 10, Syracuse, Notre Dame should get in. Allison, what do you think? Well, guys, I just was talking to Frank Howard kind of about the situation they're in, and he's very much aware that nothing is guaranteed for Syracuse. He's like, we're human. We know the position we're in. It's something that's in the back of our minds. But the way they feel is they're playing some of their best basketball right now. That win against Clemson certainly should be big with the committee, and it's definitely been big for them. They feel like they're building some momentum going into the tournament. He said, like, we just have to keep an aggressive mindset, take no plays off. So this is what we've worked for all year. Obviously, last year on the bubble left out, they're really looking to write a different script here in the ACC tournament for the NCAA tournament. Uh, Allison, they have not taken any plays off, including that dribble penetration there by Howard and the lob over the top. The difference in this game is they forced Wake Forest in the six turnovers in this game, leading to nine points. We said at the top that Wake Forest cannot turn it over, and that's been their Achilles heel here early in the first half. And there's something a, a little ironic about uh, any of the guards on this roster saying that they can't afford to take any plays off because that has played 96 percent of available minutes <laughs> yes. and Howard 95 <laughs> and percent is up there himself I yeah. think he's second in the ACC in minutes played second nationally Tyus battle number one and Frank wow. Howard seventh <laughs> can read my writing that's too long and out of bounds off of Wake's to route more and folks, we talked about at the top Howard's ability to be able to find players at 6'5". He can see over the top of any situation, and I think he's an elite-level passer. And how about the finish by Chukwu inside? That was beautiful. Seven foot two. That's a page out of the Duval to Bagley playbook, indeed, which has been successful for Duke. A little 2-3 zone here from Wake Forest, so the same rules apply. you got to get some dribble penetration or shoot right over the top of it. Tyus Battle has said it's not the minutes. It's all mental at this point, whether it's fatigue or whatever it might be that sometimes can keep players off the floor. But he has come to play here so far today. 12 points for him, 4 of 5 shooting to start. The Demon Deacons, 4 of 12 from the floor. And Crawford sneaks through their leading scorer at 17 points a game. Well, he's so crafty when he catches it inside. I love the decision Danny Manning made. Though he's shorter inside, he's very comfortable scoring around bigs. And we've seen that on two straight possessions there for Wake Forest. Yeah, he had good games against the Orange, which they split this year. That's an offensive foul going the other way. And folks, watch as battle comes off this screen. He's got the entire package. If you go under or get hung up on that screen, he is such a confident shooter. And that was actually a challenge spot, but he's, as a scorer, when you make one or two, your confidence goes to another level. And when somebody's hands in your face, it's as if no one's there. And that's the kind, that's the level that battle is playing with right now on the offensive end. And his zone mate up top is going to have to be careful for the remaining eight and a half minutes of the first half. Frank Howard with that offensive foul picked up his second. Nice. Lobs at both ends. Chuku on the right and Moore on the left. A change of speed, change of direction there by Mitchell Wilbekin. The top of that zone there was a little confused, which is how he was able to get down the gap. Wake Forest needs a lot more of it. Reset aggressive on the take. Just two points for him so far. And we'll look to add to that total as Wake tries to climb back from an early deficit. Finding that the in transition, they've got to Wake Forest be able to close the distance between the passes and got to get out higher on the floor as Syracuse extends that zone, especially at the top. Whomever the two guards are playing up there, generally at least one of them is among the league leaders in the ACC in steals per game. And you see exactly why that's the case right there. We're set at the free throw line. Gets the front end. So he's got three points. 
in the game's first 12 minutes. Leading score is Tyus Battle with 12. And on the other side for the Demon Deacons, five of their 13 belong to the big man, Doral Moore. Can't keep just throwing it around the horn, you gotta attack. Brown has it taken away by Battle, another steal. There have been few possessions for the Demon Deacons here in the first half where a shot has been taken mm -hmm. and there have been more than 10 seconds on the shot clock. I think that's Wake's seventh turnover now. You gotta push. See how slow the advance is? You've got to be able to push it more quickly to get some easy opportunities before that 2-3 zone sets up. Missed opportunity there by Wake Forest. And an off-balance look from Crawford, but he drops it home. Do you see why he's the ideal person to put at that spot? Notice the poise he had when he turned and looked, wasn't phased. I'd, I'd like to see Wake Forest keep him in the middle of that zone because he's made some really good plays here in the first half. He averaged 23 points in two games against the Orange during the regular season. I think Dolajai and Doral Moore bumped heads. One head, one nose. That is painful. Eyes begin to water. I know one bread, one body was always in the uh, psalm book at church, but one head, one nose, I don't believe was included among the psalm. That is definitely not in there. Oh, look at that one. As he came up, Dolajai, yes, Doral Moore's nose, face caught the back of his head. It was hurt. Fortunate that it was just a whistle to stop play and no fouls because both of those guys have two at the moment. Frank Howard also with two for the Orange, but him and Tyus Battle, the only two healthy scholarship guards on the roster right now. Yeah. Howard Washington, mm -hmm. the freshman, out for the rest of the year, a torn ACL in his right knee. And after just a few games, six to be exact, Geno Thorpe, the transfer, left the team. Woods with a floater and drops it home over the seven-footer. And Mike, that, that's what we were talking about earlier. See how much more quickly Brandon Childress got that basketball up the floor? There are some opportunities for Wake Forest to get if they would just push the ball after turnovers and miss shots. Reset from the wing. Just short and a rebound by the Frenchman Saar. The good counterpart at seven feet tall against the 7-2 Chuku. Star drive just goes off the glass and tips it out toward the Syracuse bench. No teammates home. Long strides there, lost his balance on the way in. Mm -hmm. Brissett just trying to find his stroke. He's 0 for 4 from deep. I like what Wake Forest is doing here defensively, though, is they're willing to clog the painted area and force Syracuse to shoot, knock down some threes. Now they've got to push that basketball and get some scores on the other end. Still too slow on the advance. Crawford has it swatted away, but it's goaltending. The ball was on the second half of its arc. And now all of a sudden, it's a seven-point game and a 10-1 run by Wake Forest. And folks, this is what's happening is they're starting to push the basketball that time out of secondary break. I thought that was a really good call there by the official. But this came out of secondary break. There was a gap there. Woods was able to attack it. And they've got to get more opportunities. And that's what's really gotten them back in the game. Playing with some pace and forcing Syracuse to have to knock down jump shots that they've missed. Being able to get the Orange to do two things that they're not exceptionally well at. Moving quickly and shooting from deep. Allison? Well, just to your guys' points, you mentioned that Syracuse.
Syracuse has been forced to shoot from three. But Wake's done a good job of making sure those shots aren't coming from Battle and Howard. And during the last time out, that was the main point of emphasis. The coach is telling their guys, look, there's two people you have to worry about shooting jump shots. That's Howard and Battle. Other than that, don't get so wrapped up in the other guys. And it's led to some success here for Wake. And Allison, to your point, that's Danny Manning's former pro experience. What we used to do either during games or even going into the game, you want to take away the team's strength and force them to their weakness. Wow, what I tell you, Mitchell Wilbergen is impacting this game in a masterful way, pushing in transition and hitting a huge three there. A 13 to one. He doesn't want this to be the last game of his career, yes. that's for certain. Slow start for Wake Forest. Two for nine from the floor. Since then, they made eight of their next 11. And for Syracuse, their two top scorers, Howard and Battle. Howard hasn't scored since the 16 minute 47 second mark in battle since about nine minutes to play. Their last three shots all miss three pointers. It looks like Wake Forest is going to stay in that zone. They're going to pack it in the middle and force Syracuse to have to make perimeter shots. Got to push here. An opportunity to make it a one possession game for the Demon Deacons, who trailed by as many as 16. With 11 minutes to play in the first half. That's a shot that Brandon Childress can make. He shoots 50% from the three-point line over the last five games. 7 of 14 from the field. With the foul trouble the Orange has right now, Barama Sidibe is playing. At the five spot for SU coming in there to try and clean things up didn't have to do any work the freshman from Newark, New Jersey who plays on average only 13 minutes a game has battled through knee trouble all year long Only used when necessary and it's necessary here in the first half Crawford from the corner. No Saar with the rebound a pump fake and too much on it. Uh, he didn't finish it, but did you see how high Saar went to get that ball? Wow, he was way up. He's had a great international career preceding his collegiate one with the France national team. Crawford! Tyus Battle was going for a jump ball. Instead, it's his first foul. Later tonight, Steve Levy and Kenny Main have Sports Center on ESPN after the West Coast Conference Championship game between BYU and Gonzaga. A stacked docket tonight, including Joe Lenardi with tonight's automatic bids and predictions. Sports Center comes your way 11 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Mike's picking up the Sixers. Joel Embiid is my favorite big man in the league right now. His ability to be able to play with his back to the basket and step out on the floor and make plays. I haven't seen anyone like him in a long time. Well, how many forwards do you know that end up on local news at their hometown team's Super Bowl celebration either? Right? <laughs> Renaissance man. Brissett not hot from three and can't finish at the rim either. The lead remains six. Childress pushing for Wilbekin in the corner. One shot. And the possession comes to an end. I know they're not making them, but I love the offense that's being created off the early push. Brandon Childress coming into the game has really established a nice pace on the offensive end for Wake. They've just not been able to complete any baskets on the last two possessions. And now fewer than two minutes remain until halftime. Howard from way outside. It's been a consistent push. Right at the rim, a finger roll for Childress. Makes it a four-point game. And that's what we've been talking about, Mike. Anytime they can force Syracuse to miss, especially the long shots lead to long rebounds and usually an advantage in transition. And that was certainly the case there for the Demon Deacons. That might have been the easiest two they've gotten so mm -hmm. far. Mm -hmm. Syracuse can't settle, though. They've got to get it inside and drive the basketball. After the deflection, five to shoot. Dolajai drives and a blocking foul is called. The Wake Forest bench can't believe it, and the Orange faithful rise to their feet in Brooklyn. Let's take a look at that. I thought Okeke was moving, so I thought it was actually a good... Yeah, he's still sliding. That's a good call by the official. 
And folks, just so you know, when you're coming across as the secondary defender, you have to establish yourself. You can't slide underneath. You can't move backwards either. You can either be in a restricted area and jump straight up in the air. If you're outside the restricted arc, you have to hold your position. He didn't. That was a good call by the official. I've never seen this part. Just soaking it in. <laughs> Needed to play before the half. Brian Crawford has been really good in the middle of that zone. I think he's got to get a touch here. Somebody's got to get a shot off under the bucket. Totally shy with the rejection. One to shoot for the Demon Deacons. What a nice reaction there by Dolezal. I thought Crawford should have gone up with his left hand and kissed that one off the glass. And now they're going to look perhaps for a tip in here as they bring in the seven footer Sar. Coming up on the Audi halftime report, we'll take a look at what tickets have been punched. And check in with Joe Lenardi. You see what is happening around the bubble. Ooh, that's a foul. Brian Crawford got fouled, hit in the face on that possession, missed one, but the Fisher missed that one. Three opportunities, no buckets, and now a three on two. And the call is an offensive foul on O'Shea Brissett, and I think a good one. He extended the arm, and that's exactly what Ray Stion saw with the call. Well, even if he didn't extend the arm, the defensive player, which I thought was Mitchell Wilbekin, folks, you have the ability to be able to slide at an angle or backwards, but you can't move into the player. I think that's a really good call there by the official. Because he didn't extend it. It was more the contact right. created. I prefer it to be a no call in a situation like that, but I'm sure from their pers their perspective, it was so violent that they felt they needed to make a call. Shot clock is off, and the game clock down to 15 for Wade. Crawford or Wilbekin on this possession. Two guys outside the arc. Here's Wilbekin at three. Loose ball, and that's it for the end of the first half. Well.